here. This talk kind of tries to say, this is Lucene now, and this is what we can do. I can't talk about everything it can do because there's too much, but we can kind of get into the major areas. And if you haven't used Lucene, then you might have an idea of uh, what this thing is all about. So just to start, this is my idea. We'll, we'll overview Lucene. So if you download this thing and unzip it, that's what we're going to talk about. What are the different folders and what can it do? Um, afterwards, I'll, I'll just make some general conclusions, and then um, we'll have Q&A. Uh, we can dig into anything that you're interested in. So again, if you download Lucene, you're, you're going to see a list of stuff like this. Um, there's actually probably 15 or 20 of these, but we don't have all the time in the world, so we'll just do some of them. But these are basically the different modules of Lucene. It, it used to be that you had Lucene Core, and uh, kind of everything was shoved in there, and, and then you had various uh, contributions that were external, but we've tried to organize it so it, it makes more sense in Lucene 4, and this is what it looks like. So um, we'll kind of go through the important ones here, starting with Lucene Core. So the Lucene Core library, this is the minimal you need to do anything related to search with Lucene. Uh, the other stuff is kind of optional, but, but this one's mandatory, and uh, we'll talk about why. So at the basic level, this is what we're trying to solve here. The ability to, to type in some keywords like this and, and get search results very fast that are relevant. So uh, the key parts of this are a fast response time, relevant results, and uh, you know, everything else is sort of a bonus. So this is, this is what search is all about here. So how does this work? How is it fast? Well. The main reason it would be fast versus, say, a database, because we just searched, say, billions of, of web pages very quickly, is that we have an inverted index. And the index is sort of like a uh, back of a book. You turn to the back of the book, and you, you find your search term, because you sort of know that they're, you know, the words in the back of the book are in a certain order. They, they make sense. And then once you find your term, then you have a list of pages that it appears. And this is actually exactly what's happening with uh, Lucene, and that's all it's doing. So um, you can do it manually, or you can use Lucene to do it. So this process of creating this reverse index, um, this is what Lucene Core does. It can do it pretty fast. You can use uh, multiple threads to do it. This, this all works. Uh, with some hardware, you can get like, speeds like 200 gigabytes per hour, which is pretty fast. It does depend on the size of your documents and the type of processing you're doing. Uh, what your speed will be, and we'll talk about some of that processing later, but um, in general, it, it's pretty fast. Um, one thing about it is you don't just build this one time, like I have my book, let's build an index for it. You can uh, sort of do this incrementally, so you can, as you're writing your book, you know, you're, you're also updating the index, and this is important, and you can also delete things as well. So uh, this, this sort of uh, is different than the old batch model, and Lucene's sort of uh, grown to be very well at near real-time search. So uh, when, when new documents are coming in, they're, they're searchable very quickly. Um, beyond full text, like we think of this as the classical IR problem of search, but these days people have structured data is, is, is very common. So you have numeric fields, you have dates, and Lucene has support for, for doing search with these kind of things as well. So uh, it's, it's more than just uh, text search. You can use it actually to do kind of a mix of, of structured data and unstructured data. So let's talk about how we might customize this process. Uh, probably the most important part is called the analysis chain. And what this does is this, this is the rules for when we're creating this index in the back of the book. This is the rule for what is going in there. When we take a document or a page of a document, how do we determine what should go in the index? Which words are important? Which ones aren't important? You know, how should they be listed there? And that, that's what this is all about. And so this is probably the most important part to understand about Lucene if you want to improve your search results, because this is what it's all about. So analysis is, at a basic level, we think of taking a page, and we want to get the words out of it. Words are pretty good features for search. And so um, the first step for this is a tokenizer. How can we split it into words? Uh, you know, a simple one is to split on white space. For, for some cases. But we, we might also want to do more. We split, into, we split into words, but this isn't quite enough. Uh, you know, we may want people to be able to type in uppercase or lowercase and, and, and these kind of fancy things. So, so we might do some normalization and processing as well. Um, and this is all language dependent. There are some language independent techniques, but generally for each language, you have a different strategy. And, and we'll talk about what Lucene does here. So. Um, 
Again, we, we start with a tokenizer. We need to split things into words. That's the job of the tokenizer in Lucene. Um, and then to do the normalization, we have token filters. And so when I talk about an analysis chain, it means you have a combination of these things. You have a tokenizer and some filters. Uh, it's not mandatory to have any of the filters. You can just have a tokenizer. You can keep things very simple. It's probably a good place to start, but you got to have something. So here's an example tokenizer, just to illustrate what I'm talking about. So we have, we have a small document. It's just one sentence. And uh, we just want to split it into words. This is all it's going to do. So uh, there is one in Lucene called the white space tokenizer. And then there's, there's 20 more. Some of them are very fancy and complicated. And some, like this one, are very simple. But in this case, this one does a pretty good job. It's almost exactly what we want. For the token filter, again, we want to do some normalization. Uh, the, the words that I split weren't quite good enough for search, because we want people to type in you know, uppercase, lowercase. We maybe don't want to have uh, worry about plural forms versus singular forms. And so we have some filters that can do this. We have a lowercase filter, and it, it, it lowercases these words that were in uppercase. And we have a stimmer that, that will remove plurals, or try to. And so um, there's, there's almost 100 of these filters in Lucene to do various tasks. So it's really flexible what you can do when you build this chain of processing. And you can say, I want to first do synonyms and, and lowercase, stop words, whatever you want to do. Um, so you can also write your own. You can plug in if you don't like what we have. But I think generally we've, we've found that what we have in Lucene is enough for a lot of use cases. So again, we, we can think of this list of tokenizers and token filters as an analysis chain. We call that in Lucene the analyzer. And um, this analyzer is, is used at index time, and it's also used at query time. So when the documents come in, we analyze them. And when the queries come in, we also analyze them as if they were documents. And, and, and that's how search works. That's how we have uh, search terms. So for the different languages, we have 35 languages in Lucene out of box. Um, so you, you may find that uh, it does enough or it doesn't, but it's, it's better internationalization support than previous versions of Lucene. So um, you know, this will be useful for you. So now that we've talked about the analysis chain, there's a little bit more involved. Uh, we want to take these queries from the user, uh, but we, we don't want to have to uh, you know, uh, define rules to the user like SQL, where the user has to type uh, you know, special syntax to, to get their results. How should this work? You know, if, if, you, if you have unpaired punctuation in Google, does it give you an error, or does it just continue to give you results? But in some cases, you know, maybe you do care. You, you're very uh, specific about what you want, and you do want this error like SQL. So in Lucene, we give you, we give you both ways to do things, and I'll talk about that. And uh, basically, Unlike other search engines, Lucene does not have a query language. We have several, and uh, you can write your own. So it's not hardwired into Lucene, and this is a big benefit. So again, back to our index. Let's start to think about how queries could be built from this index. Uh, we have our search terms and our list of uh, documents associated with each one. And I'll make an example here, circuit and parallel. And we can take these lists and think about how we would do, say, an or query, or an and query, or not query. And it's the obvious choice. It's just, if we want to do an or, then we will union the lists. If we want to do an and, we, we intersect them. And for not, it's just subtraction. So it's, it's working on sets, right? So in this case, we've just created sort of three queries for our uh, back of the book index that we wrote on a piece of paper. And, uh, now we have queries. And Lucene has APIs for this to do and, or, and not programmatically. So you don't have to use a query language. But it's much nicer to use one because instead of uh, you know, having to write an API each time, the user can actually use the, these you know, special syntax, like the plus sign in Google, or and, or whatnot. And so we have two ways. Again, the strict one throws an exception, like SQL, and then a lenient one that's, that uh, doesn't. It just does the best it can, takes a guess at what the user wants, which is more like Google. Or if you're not happy with this, build your own. Another feature uh, pretty important is, is we, we did the search that returned the documents, but why? And, and do I care about this document? How do I know without actually reading the document? It's like chicken in the egg. So um, you know, a, an important feature is called highlighting. And what this does is it, it allows you to make a relevance judgment as a user. Is this document relevant to my search or not? It's really important. So there, there's two main features of this that, that are key to think about, and that's uh, the snippets. These are sort of the sentences I'm choosing 
for this document, and then the search terms themselves. The, this is highlighting what the user actually typed in, so they see the context. In Lucene, we have three highlighters. Um, they all have different uh, sort of feature sets, different capabilities, they use different data structures and algorithms. Uh, it depends on your use case. I'd recommend just using the one called Highlighter as a start, but uh, you, know, you, ha you have other choices you can do. You can customize how these uh, sentences are picked. You can customize uh, how the search terms are highlighted. Should they be bold or colored red and, and things like that. So you, you have a lot of flexibility. All the highlighters have these features, but they work slightly differently for, uh, for different cases. So we've talked about search and entering in keywords. Uh, it turns out these days this isn't enough. Like uh, users don't type things correctly. Users maybe don't even know what they're searching for completely. So it would be good if uh, as soon as they start typing characters, we can start to give them relevant information. Even if that's just suggesting what they may want to type or actually giving them instant search with documents. So in Lucene, we kind of think about a suggest package where we're we're suggesting things to the user. This might be what you want, right? And so we're going to suggest uh, either queries or did you mean, try to correct your query. And these are two features I think are expected these days of any search engine. So we start with suggest. I think everyone's seen this. You know, you go into Google and you type in a few words. And we've already uh, completed with um, Berlin buzzwords just typing BU. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Buzzwords is getting pretty popular. Um, but we can do this in Lucene. We have the same feature for um, auto-suggest, and, and it has a lot of power and a lot of flexibility. One is that analysis chain I talked about. The suggester can use that, so you can actually implement all those rules, like do I want it to be case-sensitive or not? Do I want to remove accents and, and things like this? So the analysis chain plugs in to the suggester, and this is a powerful combination. I don't recommend doing anything crazy with it, but it's, it's enough that you, you can tweak the behavior a good deal. Another thing it has that's sort of separate from this is the ability to correct typos. So, uh, you know, I, I misspell things all the time, and so I always appreciate it when the auto-suggester just corrects my spelling. It's, this makes life so much easier. Uh, th this can also be kind of risky. You, could, you can bring back bad suggestions, so you have to be careful about it, but we do, we do offer the, uh, the option in Lucene to do this. And uh, then, then finally, there's sort of another way to correct errors, and that's, I put the words in the completely wrong order. We could think of that as infix suggestions. So that's, it happens occasionally with Google. It seems kind of rare, but you, you're typing in keywords, and then it, it, it just suggests you one right in the middle and, and sort of reorganizes the order of the words you typed in. But this can be useful in some cases. Um, finally, you know, there, there's the idea of, suggesting uh, queries to the user, but sometimes we want to suggest, uh, we want to attach a little bit more. Like, if we're doing Facebook and we do uh, auto-suggest, why not show their picture? You know, why not have a link right to their Facebook page? Why, why should I actually have to search? Don't suggest a query, just suggest the person to me. So, you, you can attach something called a payload, for example, the ID of the document or, or a link to their photo or whatever, and you can do this with Lucene the same way. Um, and, uh, and finally, one part about suggestion is tricky is, what about this order of the suggestions coming back? Uh, you know, this is really important to, to get the right order because usually users are they're looking at this as they type, and, and the ones you know, closest to them are, might be the ones they're going to pick. So you have this idea that we, we can uh, kind of define a scoring algorithm for, for how these things should be ranked, and Lucene leaves that to you. And we have this module called expressions that, that allows you to define that. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So I, I talked about suggest. We have the idea of did you mean. This is sort of uh, after the fact, old school spell checking. I think it's, it's sort of less useful than, than suggest. The idea is if you can catch it while they're typing it, that's better. But sometimes uh, you know, it, Google suggests something to me, and I just ignore it and keep typing my wrong stuff anyway. And it'll say, OK, really, did you mean this? Or, or maybe even I, I went ahead and searched on this for you, because I really think you screwed it up. So, Instead of returning zero results, this still has a use case, right? You may not want to return zero results, so you can just say, did you mean this? And it's, it's something more useful to the user. Uh, we can do sort of the same similar algorithms in Lucene. You can use uh, ingrams to, to do this kind of correction here. You can use edit distance. So there's different ways to figure out how to correct typos, and, and you sort of can choose what those are. Well, one thing that's interesting is, is when the words themselves you know, are, have spaces, so to speak. They, they typed in not just misspelled words, but you know, the, the words aren't even correct. Uh, an example of this is, uh, you know, if I type buzzwords 
and put a space in it. We all know Buzzwords doesn't have one here, but you know, if you do this, actually Google will bring back Berlin Buzzwords. It will work fine. So this is like a form of uh, spell correction. So um, controlling the ranking of this stuff. With the search engine, we have this built-in ranking that's you know, um, sort of based on how close the, the query is to the document. But for auto-suggest, how should this work? You know, how, how should we rank things? And the idea here is that you just define the formula yourself. We don't know. It usually depends on your use case. So this is sort of a, a newer module added in Lucene 4. And I'll give an example search here. I, I, I go into Google Maps and just search for beer. This is actually a query that I have run recently. But um, <laughs> look, you know, on the site, it comes back with these, with these documents. You know, these are places I can get beer. What is the ranking? How did they figure this out? Uh, is it based on how close they are to me? Is it based on how many reviews that each one had? And, and what was the average rating? I have no idea. Maybe some combination of those things in practice, right? They, all these different you know, things that contribute to the relevance of each one. Well, this is sort of what the expressions module is about, is allowing you to just define something like that yourself in JavaScript. So you can combine, say, Lucene score, some numeric field you have, like, like rating or popularity. And, or, and you can even do things like uh, geographic distance, just like this example. So I'll give a, a fake version. I don't know that this is their ranking algorithm. This is something I made up. But this, uh, you know, take the average rating, multiply it by, you know, number of ratings, divide it by distance, something like that. This, this is what this package does. And, what, and when you do it and you create it, it's not, it's not slow like JavaScript. It uses the language, but we, we compile it to Java bytecode. So it's the same as if you went in Lucene and extended a bunch of classes yourself in Java and wrote your own uh, sort algorithm. So it, it's very fast. So we've talked about suggestions. We've talked about uh, basic searching, highlighting. What about when uh, documents get a little more complicated? They have, uh, say, more than one dimension. Well, this is, this is sort of what the join module is about. We can, we can look at this example here. Uh, if, if you're in the US, this is a, a funny example. I think in Europe, you may not get the joke. But uh, this <laughs> Three Wolf shirt, you know, I, I'm going to go on Amazon. I, I really want this shirt. So I, I might search for uh, the size I want and the color. In this case, I, I want it in blue, extra large wolf shirt. Well, it may turn out that behind the scenes, I, I sell this product, this, this wolf shirt, but I only have, uh, you know, blue ones in a certain size. So I only have blue ones in extra large, and I only have uh, the red ones in size small. Well, if, if I search for, you know, an extra large one that's uh, red, should I, should I get back any documents? No, I mean, uh, and, and this is kind of hard to, uh, to deal with this normalization. In a database, you might use a join historically. And so that's how this, this feature got its name. But the way we solve it is in, instead of sort of uh, denormalizing this into one big fat row, because it doesn't really fit, right? It's, it's one to many. Then we'll just actually represent it one to many as a nested document. And that's what this, this feature allows you to do. So I, I can actually do a search that says, um, search, give me a wolf shirt with this size and this color. And it sort of joins those, those records together. So this, again, it's an alternative. You could still denormalize yourself. But I, I think sometimes this is a way more intuitive way to, to look at your data. So there's been two talks on this feature already. I think they came at it from uh, one, one from Lucene and one from Elasticsearch side. It's called the percolator. But uh, this is the idea of um, I'm turning search backwards. I'm turning it around. Uh, actually, I, I do it in Google. I, I register an alert. It says, you know, if a new document comes into the internet and it's about this, uh, you know, tell me about it. Send me an email. Alert me. So I don't know if anyone's used this feature, but, you know, I can, I can go and register Berlin buzzwords. And if a new document shows up talking about Berlin buzzwords, I would get notified about it. How, how would you do this? You know, it sounds pretty tricky. But actually, uh, Lucene already has this feature built in. It's had it for a long time. Um, the way it actually works behind the scenes is each time a document comes in, we build the back of the book index for that one document. We run a ton of queries against it, which are all very fast because it's a tiny index. And then we throw it all away. And I mean, it sounds terrible, but this actually works really fast. And so you can register you know, thousands of these alerts and, and index one document, run them all very fast, less than a second, and then send out your alerts. And everything works. So our back of the book index. We've talked about you know, all these different capabilities we can build off of it. But uh, 
You know, how, how does this thing actually look? We know it doesn't actually look like the back of the book that, that we've been describing, but in fact, there's compression and, and there's, there's different choices you can make and different data structures and trade-offs. And so what we did in Lucene is we made these, these backends pluggable, the way we represent this thing. And I, I'm gonna give a little example on, you know, how that would work. So let, let's take our back of the book index on a piece of paper and let's think about how we might compress this a little bit, right? Just our own form of stupid compression. So here's an example. I have the O's and the P's. And you know, we know here in our back of the book index that all the words beginning with O, we, we put them under O. And all the ones under P, we put them with P. So there's some redundancy here, right? Why do I need to actually have the P's for parallel and proton when I already know they all start with P because they're in the P section? So that's exactly how our little compression here is going to work, right? I'm just removing the redundancy here. So this is sort of what the codec module is about. I, I had this idea, it's kind of silly, and, and it's a basic example, but I did a little bit of compression here, and, and I think maybe this is useful, so I can implement a, a backend that stores my back of the book index this way. And, and you, you might have a different approach that you want to do that's different. We don't have to have just one format for Lucene anymore. We can have choices, and, and they work for different use cases. And this is what the codex module is. So, for example, right now, there, there's someone working on one specific for primary keys, unique IDs. Uh, the, there's formats that are sort of geared at different use cases, and they're more efficient. Or, or they might be less efficient in general, but for this type of data, they're, they're very good. So with the codex module, you can plug this in. You can customize how the back of the book index works, even if, uh, per field level for your documents. You can say, again, th this is a primary key field. Use, use this format. This is uh, you know, a, big, a big piece of text. Use this other format. And so uh, you know, this is pretty powerful. You can, you can really uh, implement your own stuff, your own customizations to Lucene. You could plug into some uh, you know, crazy way that, that currently Lucene doesn't have a clean way to do, because you have a lot, of, a lot of power here. You're kind of underneath all the guts. So an example here would be, you know, maybe I want to put my terms in a, in a try structure, or, I, or another guy wants a binary tree or whatever, and we, we could argue about it, or we could just implement both of them and, and give people the choice, and that's what the codex module does. So I, um, I went through a lot of these modules. I wish I could do all of them, but there, there's just not enough time. So what I want to do quickly is list the other modules that we have available with just sort of a, a quick summary of, of what they do, including the ones I, I wasn't able to address. So. We have um, a benchmarking package in Lucene. Uh, th this just is a way to, to sort of uh, write, write a file that says, I want to do benchmarking of this specific component. It's kind of useful if you're developing Lucene code. Um, we have a classification. This is actually doing document classification based on the statistics in the index. So it's an interesting way to, to look at it. Um, that's new, that's new in Lucene 4. Uh, we have a demo module. This might be the first place to start if you're actually playing with the code and, and you're looking at you know, this list of folders and thinking, well, where do I start? I start with the demo because this is a, a small little app that can index stuff and search it and, and you can maybe you know, start and build off of that. Uh, we have faceting, which I really wanted to talk about. Faceting is, uh, is, is sort of this, this browsing and searching combined that you're used to when you go to an e-commerce site and it tells you your search uh, matched things in these different departments and things like that. But this is really powerful. It has a lot of features uh, based on it, you know, just on fastening. For example, you can use uh, ranges, facet by distance. You can plug into the expressions I talked about earlier. So it, it, it hooks into other, uh, into other things. We have grouping in a similar way. You can group by, um, you know, terms. So this is like, I have results. It's different than the, the join in the sense that they're not really parent-child, they're just related. And so it, this is the idea, I just want them together. And sometimes when you search like Berlin buzzwords, I think uh, is a good one. If you search for it, you'll, you'll find that Google returns like five or six documents and it groups them all under Berlin buzzwords because they're all at that website. So that might be an example use case for grouping. But you, you can group by function, you can group by expression. So it, it, again, has the same hooks into things like fastening does. So you can combine these modules to, to really customize the experience. Uh, we have a, a folder full of index tools. This is low-level stuff like splitting an index in half, things like that. This can be useful if you're you know, doing a distributed computing. You, you want to split your index to sort of to reshard. And there's some other interesting tools in there, like pre-sort your index and, and things like that. It, it's, you just have to look and play around. Uh, I talked about queries. We, we built a little and or 
and, and not query for our back of the book index, but there's a lot more type of queries you can use. For example, you know, you could imagine an XOR query. I don't think it would be useful, but you could build it. And so that kind of thing goes into the queries module. It's just additional uh, queries that, that met someone's use case at one point in time. We have replication. Uh, this is just sort of a, a simple API to take the contents of one index and, and keep them in sync across machines. And this is useful if you, you have more website traffic than you, 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 know, you had before. You just want to scale it, scale it out by adding more replicas. So we have, you can do that just with Lucene. We have a sandbox. Uh, this is where I like to put code now when I write it, because I feel like it has a lower bar to entry. But you just, you know, this is something that is not quite right about the code, but there's some interesting, fun stuff in there. So look around. Uh, we have, we have spatial support, more than what I talked about with the Haversign function and, and the expressions, that's very basic. But there's also um, you know, some, some polygon support and more complex geospatial support in that module. Uh, and we have this test framework, finally. And, and this is an important one, because this is basically our test harness we use to test Lucene itself. So if you're using Lucene as a library, you can just also use our test harness, if you'd like, to test your own code. And we found it, it does a lot of things like detect file leaks, uh, you know, things like that. that. Usually, if you start with just JUnit, you're not going to have that level of test coverage out of box. So if you want to use the same test infrastructure that we use, it's just a library, and you can use it. So um, I've, I've kind of ripped through as fast as possible all of the different modules in Lucene. Um, I wish that I, I could have gone in depth on each one of them because they're interesting, but you know, since we only have so much time, uh, for a deeper look, I would just download Lucene, unzip it. You're going to see the same structure that I just presented here, and, and except then you can go and look at the source code and, and get way more information on it. Uh, if you haven't been to the Lucene website, we have the Java docs for all the APIs. You can get the download. Lucene in action is, is still useful. Uh, it's a good book to start with if you're just getting started with Lucene. Um, but it, it's a little out of date in the sense that it, most of these modules you won't find in Lucene in action because uh, I think they didn't exist at the time. So that's it. Questions? Please wait for the mic. Hi, I um, actually have several questions. One is about generating tokenizer code. I remember you were using JFlex, but it was kind of not very well supported library back then. Uh, did anything change from this time? And the second question about classification. Can you please elaborate more on it? What kind of classification you do and how does it work? Just in a few words. Thanks. Oh, okay, well, let's start first with the, the tokenizer one. So um, yes, we still use JFlex for, um, for our standard tokenizer. But as I mentioned, uh, we, we have 20 different tokenizers. So you don't have to use it if you don't like. Um, you, you, know, you could implement your own using using anything you'd like. You can just handwrite it in Java code if you want. Um, but yeah, that is, that is our standard one. Uh, and we still use JFlex. And one of the committers on JFlex is also a Lucene committer. So I think it's, it's, it's still being maintained. It's, it's still being released. And, and it works quite well. It's just you know the, the generated code doesn't look great because it's, it's generated code. That's just the way it works. As far as the classification module, um, you're asking how the, the scoring works for classification? What, oh, what type of algorithms? Uh, as far as I remember, we, we have k nearest neighbor, and there's one more that we have. Simple, simple naive Bayes. Some, yeah, so I, I'm not really a classification guy. You're going to have to look at the code if you want more information on it. That's probably the best place to start. Thank you for your talk. I have a question regarding garbage character. I think in old times, Lucene was trying to minimize number of objects to uh, generated during queries, so to minimize what on garbage character. Is it the same in Lucene 4, or you change an approach? So do you mean um, where the code is written yes, a little so bit funky way <laughs> to, yeah, right, to, to be more efficient? And stuff like this. Yeah, unfortunately, it's still this way. I think you know, ultimately, this will improve in Java. You, you see they're, they're trying to propose changes like value types in Java. 
And so maybe when Java improves, we can take a big pass on the code and try to remove some of this, this complicated stuff. But yeah, to some extent, you know, we, we try to make it efficient and then there's always sort of a trade-off like, you know, make the code readable and maintainable and it's open source, right? This is important, but also make it efficient in, in production. And so you, there's got to be a balance there, right? But yeah, it's still kind of funky like that right now. Hi, thank you for your talk. Um, the, uh, the quality of a suggestion module or suggestion function depends a lot on how users use the system. Is there some way to take into account things like query logs or user clicks in a simple way with Lucene? Well, right. So basically what we do um, when it comes to this, and that's why we have modules like the expressions module and stuff is we bail out on how you should rank suggestions completely. And we leave it totally up to you. Like you have to figure out this problem. So yes, I mean, we don't provide tools to do say query log analysis or, or any of that kind of stuff. I, I think um, someone else maybe can do a better job than us when it comes to, to those kind of tools. But, you know, it's something we bail on. We just say, hey, we'll give you the infrastructure to do suggestions, and as far as how you rank them, that's, that's up to you. It's hard. I know you're running out of time here, but in, in a very few words, if, if you could tell us what's, what's sort of the next big things coming up for Lucene. The next big thing? I wish I knew. I mean, I, it, one of you guys could come online right now with a, a big patch that changes everything, and then that would be the next big thing, right? Uh, so I, I don't know. I know we're working on improving the way um, you know, positional queries work, I think, is something that will come. Uh, in the past, they've been kind of slower and, and not as flexible as we would like. So this is something that we would really like to fix soon. So, for example, uh, the queries, sort of like the functionality you get from span queries, making this a, a more core thing that works. So, um, I think that'll be more useful. It will also improve things like highlighting because we just have better proximity support. Uh, maybe provide stuff like uh, proximity-based ranking out of box that, that builds on top of that. Um, otherwise, I can see like you know more codecs. Like uh, I mentioned, this uh, specialized format just for for unique IDs. I think we'll start to see more of that. It's, it's really useful and practical, and we can plug it in cleanly. So I think uh, it'll just be an expansion, better compression, things like that. But in general, it's open source. We don't know. There's no plan or anything. It's just whatever comes up on the list, that's, that's what will happen. So we'd like to thank you again for your talk, uh, and thanks for your questions too. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>